better is more practice in terms of finding the slope of the tangent line at a given point or in general. So this is real big time calculus, big time algebra. I'm proud of you that you're willing to practice to get better at this. So when you actually know the point where you're finding the slope at, I have a more easy, more efficient formula we're going to use. So I'm going to write that down right now. So if I know the point, it says x approaches that point at negative 2. So I'm going to call that a. So if I'm going to look and I'm approaching the x value, whatever that is, that formula I'm going to use. In the numerator, it will be f at x minus f at a. In our situation, a is negative 2. And then x subtract a will be the denominator. This whole formula is a form of the slope formula that will make it easier to get to the answer. All right, so let's begin. So in this situation, to find the slope, I'm going to use that easier formula. So I'm going to go as x approaches negative 2. I just need the x value. In the numerator, it'll be f at x subtract f at negative 2. So I'm using that negative 2. And then the denominator is x subtract negative 2. And that's this, making it just a little bit simpler if I know the exact point I'm looking for. So I'm going to make sure I write the limit notation. f at x is just 2x squared subtract 3. This makes the algebra much simpler. Um, subtract. Now plug in negative 2. You could do this in your head. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. Take away 3, so that's 5. So we're going to subtract 5. In the denominator is x subtract negative 2. And that's what we're going to simplify. So again, the limit as x approaches negative 2, the numerator becomes 2x squared subtract 8. The denominator is x plus 2. I look to see if I can factor so I can divide out the whole. So in the numerator, 2 goes into both. That leaves me with x squared subtract 4. One more time, the numerator is called the difference of squares. So that's going to be x plus 2 and x minus 2. Now look to see, can you see the whole that's going to divide out? And now we can substitute in, and I don't need the limit notation anymore. So now plug in negative 2, and we have 2, negative 2, subtract 2. So that's 2 times negative 4. So the slope at that point is negative 8. Number 2. Let's use that same formula because we know the x value. So we're going to write down the slope is the limit as x approaches. In this case, it's going to approach 3. So as x is approaching 3, what's the slope? So the formula is going to be f at x subtract f at 3. And then the denominator will just be x subtract 3 equals. Now again, I'm going to just write down f at x, which is 1 over 5 minus x, subtract. Then I'm going to plug in 3. So 5 take away 3 is 2. Well, actually, we have the answer right there, 1 half. So it's 1 half. And then in the denominator would be 3 take away 2, or x take away 3. Next, I need to do some algebra. So I need to make one fraction in the numerator. So how can I do that efficiently? So the first denominator needs a 2 so they can be the same. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom times 2. The second fraction needs a 5 minus x. So we have 5 minus x top and bottom. Now the denominators are the same. So let's combine like terms. So up here I have 2 take away 5, and I have a negative and a negative x. So the negative and a negative makes that a positive x. 2 subtract 5 is 3, but it's a negative 3. And then the denominator is 2, 5 minus x. Next, we're going to, how do we divide fractions? We multiply times the reciprocal. So we'll do that. 
times the reciprocal. Can you see the hole that's going to divide out? Now we're in a position to substitute in, and we will. So we have 1 in the numerator, and then x is 3, so now we can plug that in, and now we can find the limit. So this answer is 1 quarter. So, number three, find the equation of the tangent line. So, we already know x equals 1. We know y is 3, but we need to find the slope. How are we going to find the slope? We're going to find it, since I know the x-coordinate, it's as x approaches 1. The numerator is f at x subtract f at 1, and the denominator is x subtract 1. So, using that x value. Then I'm going to keep using the limit notation. f at x is x squared plus 4x subtract 2. f at 1 is 3. The answer is right there. So subtract 3. And then the denominator stays x subtract 1. Now it's time to do some algebra. So we're going to combine like terms. x squared plus 4x minus 5. Then I hope I can factor this. Make sure you keep using the limit notation. I can, obviously. What are the two numbers? Positive 5 and negative 1. And then do you see the hole that divides out? So what's the slope as you substitute 1 in? And the answer is 6. Then what's the equation? So the equation then is going to be y equals the slope, 6. Then the x-coordinate, change the sign, and then plus 3 keep the sign. So change the sign, keep the sign, and you have a quick linear equation. That tangent line touches the point at 1, 3 for this. Let's try that again. So number four, I want to find the equation of the tangent line. So I already know x is negative 1, y is 2, and I need to find the slope. How do I find the slope? So we're using a little quicker method here because I know the x coordinate. So it says x approaches negative 1. So then we're going to go f at x minus f at negative 1. That's y2 minus y1. That's the slope formula. And then the denominator, we have x subtract negative 1, which is like x2 minus x1. Keep going. Write the limit notation. Now, in the numerator, f at x is negative 2x cubed. And then uh, the y value, like when you plug in, is just positive 2. So you subtract 2. And then in the denominator, we have x plus 1. Next, we need to do some algebra. So I'm going to factor out a negative 2, and I get x cubed plus 1 over x plus 1. The, what's left over is called uh, sum of cubes. So I know the 0 is at negative 1. So I'm going to use that negative 1. And I'm going to divide into that sum of cubes. We have 1x cubed, 0x squared, 0x, and 1. We're going to divide synthetically. So we have 1, negative 1, positive 1, and then negative 1. So what I do is I add and then multiply. I add and then multiply, and I add and then multiply. A quick way to do division. So I'm going to come back here. So again, the slope is x approaches negative 1. We have x plus 1. That comes from here. And then I have x squared minus x plus 1. And then in the denominator I have x plus 1. So they divide out. Substitute negative 1 in. You don't need limit notation for the final substitution. Make sure I can do this right. This looks like 1 plus 1 plus 1, so that's negative 6. That's what I get. So now let's put it all together. I'll do that up here. So the slope is negative 6. The x-coordinate, we're going to write down x plus 1, and then the y-coordinate, keep the sign, plus 2. This is the equation of the tangent line. All right, number 5, same thing. Keep practicing. So step 1. What is x equal to? What is y equal? Negative a third. The slope is the limit as x approaches 2. And we have f at x subtract 
f of 2, which we know is negative a third, and then x subtract 2. So there's our start. So we have negative 1 over x plus 1 plus a third over x minus 2. Oh, the limit as x approaches 2. Don't forget that limit notation to the end. So the limit as x approaches 2, we need one fraction here. So to make fractions, the first denominator needs a 3. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom times 3. The second one needs an x plus 1, top and bottom. Now the denominators are the same, so I can combine like terms. Make that one fraction. So we have x minus 2, negative 3 plus 1 over x plus 1 times 3 over x minus 2. Now we're going to multiply times the reciprocal. So we have the limit as x approaches 2. We have x minus 2. We have x plus 1 times 3. And then the reciprocal, 1 over x minus 2. Almost running out of space. So I'm going to put the final answer up here. So the whole now finally divides out. What we're going to plug in is 2. So I know I have a 1 on top. When I plug 2 in here of what's left over, 2 plus 1 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. So it's 1 ninth. Now I can put it all together. So I have y equals 1 ninth, x minus 2, subtract 1 third. Done. This is my goal. Number six. Given each equation, write an equation for the slope of the line tangent. So we're going to do the same work we did here, but I'm going to use the other formula because I know it gives me an x value, but we need to practice the other one as well. So we're going to do that. So to find the slope, we're going to use the other one, which is the limit as h approaches 0. And then we have x plus h subtract f at x over h. I'm just going to put that in if I simplify it. So let's start there. So step one is I'm going to plug in x plus h into there. That's x plus h squared minus 3x plus h plus 7 subtract. Now, do I know the y coordinate yet? No. So I'm going to plug in negative 2. In fact, I could have plugged in negative 2 in here, and I will. Um, I'll do that at the end. So just put in f at x. So I'm going to use parentheses. That's x squared minus 3x plus 7, and that's just over h. Now I need to do some algebra. So how do I expand x plus h squared? So that's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Keep going. Subtract 3x, the negative 3, and the h, and then plus 7. And then this subtract sign distributes. So that's negative x squared plus 3x, and then subtract 7. Now, if I did this correctly, this will be very simplified right here. So x squared should have a partner, and it does. Negative 3x should have a partner, and positive 7 should have a partner. So all you're left with are terms that have an h in them. So that would be 2xh, that would be h squared, and negative 3h. That's what's left. Now, we're going to divide out the h. So if I divide out the h, what am I left with? That's 2x. We still have 1 h left over and minus 3. Now I can do that substitution. So now when I substitute in, I'm left with 2x subtract 3. Now, no matter what the x value is, I could find the slope at any point along that curve. So I already know it says, hey, the x value is negative 2. The y value I found did I use it? I'd even find it. So if I find the y value, plug in negative 2, and you get 4 plus 6 plus 7. So 13 
So 4 plus 6 is 10 plus 7. I get 17. Double check, make sure that's right. 4 plus 6 plus 7 looks good. And if I plug in to find the slope, negative 2 times negative 2, that's negative 7 when you combine like terms. That's the slope. So if I put this all together, the slope is negative 7, and then I get x plus 2 plus 17. There's the equation of the tangent line. All right, two more. I know this is challenging. Welcome to calculus, right? But we can do this together. What's challenging eventually becomes awesome rather than something so simple that you could do it when you're sleeping. So this good work's going to pay off. I think you have to trust me on that. All right. Step one again. I want to find the slope. So that's the limit as h approaches zero of f at x. Sorry. f at x plus h subtract f at x over h. I'm going to substitute it in. So I have x plus h cubed, which is horrible to expand, then x plus h, subtract, parentheses, just plug in the whole function, x cubed minus 2x, and that's all over h. So I'm going to help you with the expansion of this cubed, a binomial. Soon, our next lessons, we're going to learn shortcuts to know how to take derivatives rather than having to do limits every time. But this is such good work algebra-wise, you're going to appreciate the, the shortcuts much better. So I'm going to expand this for you, though. That is x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. I just did it for you. Let's move on. Then minus 2x subtract 2h, subtract x cubed plus 2x. Now, anything that has an h or x with no h in it will have a partner. So x cubed and negative x cubed, they eliminate. Negative 2x plus 2x eliminate. So what does that leave me with? Only that which has an h in it. So 3x squared h, 3x h squared, and h cubed. So now we're going to divide out the h's. So that leaves me with 3x squared I forget so, oh I forgot a minus 2h. Make sure I include that. Or else you're not going to get the right answer. Alright, so if I divide the h out of everything, so h into everything, so the h into each term, this is what I get. And you'd have a 1 on the bottom. Uh, 3x squared is what you'd be left with. Here you'd be left with 3xh. Here you'd have just h squared. We're dividing an h out of each term, minus 2. Now plug in 0. And what you're left with is 3x squared minus 2 to find the slope. So now I'm going to go back. x equals negative 2. That's given in the question. Why? If I plug negative 2 into here, that's a negative number. So that's negative 8 plus 4. That's minus 4. And then the slope, I need to plug negative 2 into here as well. So negative 2 squared is 4 times 3. That's 12. Take away 2, which is 10. So the equation is 10x plus 2 subtract 4. One left. You are so good. And you're going to enjoy the next lesson where we're going to learn more shortcuts instead of having to do this the long way. All right, one more time here. I want to find the slope. The limit as h approaches 0, and it's f at x plus h subtract f at x all over h. Don't forget the limit notation until the very end. Substitute in. So where there's an x, put in x plus h. f at x is 1 over x. 
I need to write this as one fraction. So we need common, you're hearing my dog in the background here. Uh, to make this one fraction, we just take the other denominator. It's okay. So we're going to take x and multiply top and bottom by x. And we're going to take x plus h, top and bottom. And now we have common denominators. So as I write this, as I write this, the limit as h approaches zero. Every time I, I stop petting her, she starts barking. Um, we need to combine like terms on top. So x subtract x is done, and then we have a negative h left over. So we have negative h, x plus h times x, all over h. So the last step here, as we get to the end of the video, is to multiply times the reciprocal, and then divide out the whole. So now we're at our last step here, where we plug in 0, and we get 1, negative 1 over h. Sorry, plug in 0 and you get negative 1 over x squared. So plug in 0 for h and get negative 1. x times x gives us negative 1 over x squared. So let's recap here. x is negative 2. The y value, if I plug in negative 2, is negative 1 half when you go here. And then the slope, if I plug in negative 2, that's squared, so it's negative a quarter. So putting it all together here, it's y equals negative a quarter x plus 2 plus, no, nope, minus 1 half. There it is. There's your equation of the tangent line. All right, Mr. G, math over and out. I know that this was not simple. I get it. It's good work. It's hard work. And you did it, and I'm proud of you. 